Okay, so I, I want to point that out. Okay, um, I, there's so many things that people sent me this week, so I'm going to actually share. I don't know if we'll get through the whole sheet. I have so much to do, so maybe we'll uh, we'll do another class tomorrow. So. The rabbi, you're recording on camera. You can, What's that? I got you recording saying you're going to say, no, 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 do no, another class. I'll, I'll do it. You want to come tomorrow? It's a half a day here. So. Uh, beautiful story that somebody sent me. A Holocaust survivor has a bris for his great grandson. It's his 90 year old man. It's his 49th great grandchild. The bris was on Yom HaShoah, and he asked the rabbi to do the actual bris at the moment that the siren was blasting. Tear jerker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody sends me these tear jerkers. You know, but it's, it's such a special thing. Do you have a sheet? Yeah, my mom's team has a name here for them. Yes, that I heard also. Okay, let's do some nice things. Okay, here we go. Then I have two other things that I'm going to read and not get that goes through the thing. Okay, so this week's Parshat is Parshat Kiddoshi. The first page, I, I, I'm going to do two things on the first page before I get to actually the most important form to give you my humble opinion that we always need to study. We'll do some new stuff. But let's start with Kiddoshi. It starts the Pasuk says by Daber Hashem or Moshe the Lord, Daber El Kol Adat Bnei Yisrael v'Amata Lahem Kiddoshim Tihu. Be holy, and therefore the parsha is called Kiddoshim. Excellent question is: Is this a specific mitzvah? Like, is is there an action involved with be holy, or is it a general statement God wants us to be holy? And then it says Ki Kadosh Ani Hashem Elokechem. Let me tell you what bothers me. Can you say, a parent says to a child, be nice, because I'm really very nice. Does this is rub you a little bit the wrong way? It rubs me a little bit the wrong way, right? You know, like that. So really, that's how Hashem speaks. Hashem says, you be holy, because I'm really holy. So, you know, you got to be holy. So that's what bothers me. So let's talk a little bit. So there's a very famous machloket between Rashi and the Rambam. Now you're getting into high level, girls, high level. You go to home and you say, I learned the Ramban. Rashi says simple. The last topic of last week was, come on, Lori, what's the last topic of last week? We spoke about it on Monday. Adayo, right? Was inappropriate behavior in terms of moral behavior. So Rashi says that that topic needs an extra like, like this, an extra like that. So Hashem is saying, Kiddoshim to you, take a look at Rashi. Mm-hmm. Min ha'arayot I'm really sorry. You've got to be extra holy when you deal with this thing. Now, to find holiness, holiness is um, ref, uh, refraining from involvement with other things. If something is kadosh, can't touch it like that. How do you call marriage today? Kiddushin. Why is it called Kiddushin? Because at this point, right, the husband and wife are off limits to everybody else. So that's what it means. So Kadosh, Kiddushin to you. Nice. So it's not really a new mitzvah. You understand? It's just a general chizuk to stay away from things that are inappropriate, which, by the way, is, is a tough thing even today. It's even worse, right? It doesn't answer my question. The Ramban says something amazing. So it's very little letters. So I, I don't want to challenge you, but it's there. And I'll tell you what he says. And I'm going to tell you something in Hebrew. And it's not that you need to show off. You guys are great. But if you say these three words to a rabbi, he's going to go, wow, wow, girls. The Ramban, the Ramban, Ramban, Nachman, says that this pasuk is teaching us not to be, hello, mama. A naval, what's a minuval? No, nobody. What's a nevela? A minuval, a disgusting person. Ready? It's easy to remember. Birshut Hatorah. Goes like this. There are a lot of kosher meats, but God does not want us to make eating meat our priority. So we're making a seventh. We're making a kiddush for our son. And we're told, you have to order a meat board. <laughs> okay, there were no meat boards when I was a kid. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> meat boards. Okay, so like a $1,000 a board, 
and they're gone in the first second. To the point that I, all the Jewish papers, I, I'm not complaining. I don't know if this was the Atet, I don't remember. I remember, a, 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 you know, that letters to the editor, letters to the thing. Somebody complained that it's a chutzpah that the little kids, the little kids get to the meat board first before I have a chance to get to the meat board. So the whole life is about this meat board. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do the Sephardim have them also there? It's like raw, not raw, it's like the, whatever it is. And it's tremendously expensive, by the way. Okay, it's kosher. I drink only kosher wine. So I get drunk every night with kosher wine. I go manage this. Let's not be too inappropriate. I'm very careful. I married 20 girls because I wanted to do kosher. And all I think about is girls. But they all owe you. So the Ramban has said that God is saying, hello. The way to live as a Jew is to be spiritual. Do not focus on the physical. Focus on the spiritual. You have, to have a right to be physical. You have to live in this world. But Kiddoshim, watch how beautiful it is. Kiddoshim to you. Focus on your what? On your kiddusha. Now watch, watch. Ki kadosh ani. Otherwise, we're not going to have a relationship. Not that be like me. You won't be able to relate to me because I'm not physical. So if I go for spiritual experiences, then you'll be able to relate to me. That makes sense. How do you relate to God? You don't relate to God through steak. Yeah, we make a bracha, but you don't get close to God that way. And I'm sorry, I want to say something. I, I just disappointed. I tell the children about this type of thing. What's the goal of life? Go to the bathroom? No, we have to go to the bathroom. But if you live to go to the bathroom, how ridiculous is that? Yes, are there mitzvot concerning the bathroom? Yes, it's actually yatzar, there's things like that. Kiddoshim, you have to be like Rosette. She's Kiddoshah. Everybody got it? So try to remember those words. It's, it's not that you have to show up, but it's a very famous Ramban. Not to be a naval, again, nun bet lamed, berishut ha-Torah. Remember that? Okay. Don't be like that. Don't be a person. And therefore, the Torah is saying, got it? Okay, get out of the way. Um, oh, look how nice this is. Here's the same. Spirituality does not come from religion. It comes from our soul, right? The soul has to grow. Done. Book that. I only mention this here because it's very, very, very important halachically. It is this week's Parsha. To show you a few things. This week's Parsha, Kedoshim, mentions some of the Aseret HaTibrot as a repeat. Clearly, here is one of them. You see it? Middle of the page. Ish imo ve'aviv tirau ve'et shatotai tishmoru ani Hashem alokhet. I didn't go full force because I really want to do another piece. But just to remind you, or just to tell you, this is the second pasuk of Kibur Abayim. What's the first one? And it's loaded. So the Gemara wants to know. Why is that kavod? And here is yira. That I'll answer right away. Kavod are things that we do for our parents. Yira are things that we don't do to our parents. It's two different mitzvahs. It's a mitzvah aseh and a mitzvah lot aseh. Easy. You notice that the, yes. Yes. Correct. They, they don't have the everyday experiences that they go to school and they, they have a, you know, a happier life, but they still respect the grandparents because of the spirit that they give. Absolutely. They run into their home to be the first ones that they get invited or not. Right. It depends what you're serving. You understand? <laughs> you're right. You're 100% right. Okay, I, I, you're right, and I, I would say again. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. I, you know, and just to piggyback on what you said, uh, there's so many stories of the rabbis asked, you know, the people, you know, my kids, they're not involved. Well, do you say Zminot? Are you excited when the kids come? Are you excited when you do Mitzvot? You know what Rav Moshe, not Rav Moshe, I'm sorry, Rav Kamineski said once that, you know, the generation that came here earlier um, really sacrificed themselves for Shabbos because they couldn't find Shabbos Shabbos. And some of their kids went off. Some of their kids, not religious. And Rabbi Yaakov says, you know, when the father comes home, 
And he says, Oh, it's so hard. Oh, it's so schwer to Zion and Eid. Oh, it's so hard to keep Shabbos. Oh, it's so hard to go to Shul. Oh, it's so hard to keep kosher. I don't know. If I'm a 60 year old kid, I don't want to have that kind of life. But if you say, I mean, that's basically what you're saying also. If you say, Wow, I can't wait for Shabbos. Okay, so that's the second. Now, also, what's interesting, and I'm not doing this today because it takes a whole lesson, that the order is opposite, right? Kabet et avicha ve'etimecha, and here it's ish imo ba'avi, mother first. So, whole Gemara, it's a lot of beautiful stuff. If you want to come to the optional program tomorrow, I'll be very happy to discuss it. But I do want to point out a very famous halacha, A, halachali, and B, how. God teaches us things. This is a classic example. There's something called Torah Shebichtav and there are Torah Shebaalpeh, and they're both Torah. Torah Shebichtav is the words that are written in the Torah. Clear. Are we allowed to eat a pig? No. Torah says, don't eat a pig. It says, right? Torah says, keep showing. And then there are things that Hashem, I don't want to say the word hinted, showed us in a different way that the rabbis see from the Torah, and they're just as Torah as the other Torah. As Torah, okay? I have a uh, corn drop. Would you like? No, it's kosher. <laughs> Never take candy from a stranger, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. And I'm the strangest you ever met. Here we go. Listen, this is big. Good. So the Torah says, on the appearance, and then in the same pasuk, what does it say? It's a very famous verse. You should know it. The Ed Shab, this week's Parsha, the Ed Shab to Tai Tishmo, and keep the Shabbat. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Next time we're just gonna have to take your phone away. Okay. Ed Shab to Tai Tishmo. Now, that's very beautiful. Keep the Shabbat. What's the obvious question here, though? Come on. Why are you putting it in the same basu? Right? If you were setting this up, Shabbos is important. People have Ed is important. Right? I got it. Very nice. Give it two separate things. By the way, we already have an earlier connection between these two. If you look at the bottom right, you see that Zachor Yom Shabbat is right next to what? To Kabbat um, uh, Fine. But give it its own basu. Fair? Everybody with me? That's called, you ready? Why are you getting so much stuff today? That's called the Hekesh. Hey, Yud, Kuf, Shin. What does that mean? Why did God put something next to something? You see how, how pure the Torah is? Everything has a reason. And this one's a big one. So as a kid, this might be you know, easier for you to hear. As a parent, it might not be easier. For you. Okay. Yes, you're supposed to honor your parents. But if your parents ask you to do a sin, you don't have to do a sin. You have to honor them, you have to be nice to them, you have to respect them, you know. And that's how we learn. And that's the right time. You're not so bad. It's not something that one of the rabbis made up over the years. That means God is saying to me, and that happens. I'll be honest. If parents saying, honey, we're going out to eat. And mommy, where are we going? We're going to the non-kosher restaurant. Mommy, I can't go to a non-kosher restaurant. But honey, grandma's going to be there. I, I, I can't go. And she's allowed to say that. What's the matter with that? Say what? Any, any other mitzvah? No, 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 no. Let's read it. Let's read it. Ooh, I think that Rashi heard your question. The last four words, honey. V'chen, you see the first page. No. V'chen v'sha'ar kol ha-mitzvah. Open a shut case. That's a big deal. It gets very big, even though we'll move a little bit because everybody want to get to the next page. It gets bigger like Kid wants to go to Israel to study Torah. And mommy says no. So a smart rabbi would tell the kid that, you know, what happened? Man? What did I do wrong? She, her kid's gone. Her kid's gone. Her kid's the other way around. Right? No, not. Yes, but that's a big deal. So Avi, okay, let's go back. I tell the kids, I teach this. I tell the kids, if your mommy says what that is, if your parent says, you have to be home by 12. For every minute you don't come home after 12, you're getting a sin. That's called keep what I'm really sorry. Torah says, listen to your parents. I know it's ridiculous. I do say to my parents. No, wait, no, but it, it, they're actually, that's why I ask it. They're actually playing. Mark, Mark. No, I just want to close the door. If they're making noise. No, thank you. Because I wouldn't talk to them like with fighters. It's not a joke. If, if parents say something, you're supposed to listen to them. 
So here comes this claim, right? Garrett say, you're not going to Israel. Okay, the truth is you should work it out. You should work it out. I mean, that's what I would say, right? But end of the day, end of the day, if the child decides to go, is he sinning? No, he's not. Is he doing a mitzvah? Is he making, is he doing a sin? Nope. We go further, and then you all will walk out. Okay, but I don't know. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Hi, mommy. I met a boy. Nice. What's his name? Yossi Goldstein. What are we, he's Ashkenaz? Yeah. You're not marrying an Ashkenaz boy. Or you're not marrying a smart girl. Or you're not marrying a girl who doesn't have money. Or you're not marrying that person because their parents are divorced. Okay. All of that is not of value in the eyes of Hashem. None of them. None of them. That's not a reason not to marry. So if you want to marry a kosher person, kosher in the eyes of the Torah, and well, that's really kosher. That's a lot kosher. That's even above uh, Bet Yosef. No, but I'm serious about it. If, if, if it's not a valid reason, you can't say halakhically to the child, because I said so. Because you're saying so, has no value in the eyes of God. How's that? Aren't you happy you came to my class? <laughs> but you have to work it out. It's not so simple. Yes. Right. If you put Hashem and Lachat Any mitzvah. Any, any, anything that's against I just Torah value. There's no mitzvah that says hate money, but it's not a Torah value. Looks. No, she's much uglier than I ever thought I'd have as a daughter-in-law. Why say, oh my God, you think that doesn't happen? <laughs> but you can't run the guilt that you're going to help. You understand it's not going to work because he's not. Um, so let me just go back. Yeah, let's go the opposite. Yes, Jan, what do you want to say? I just, why do you think then that it doesn't stay bad for four times as long? Instead of not four times. No, because it's uh, this connection that it came from here. You understand? Because of the look at the bottom, the, the assert that they're right, they're right next to each other. Oh, okay. Like that. That's what which is a good point. Let's go backwards now. Let's go backwards. Parents, the girl says, I want to marry this boy. And you notice that the boy doesn't keep Shabbat. Now you're in the right. And she's in the wrong. Because you want a Torah value young man or young lady. So now you can guilt them. Not only do I say so, God says so. And now you're going to sin every moment you live with that woman. Sounds like my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, that's open and shut case. It's very famous, and I want you to know it. I also want you to understand the Hekesh part, because that's a big deal. It happens a lot. It happens when Hashem put one mitzvah next to the other. Now you're going to say to me, like you said, or somebody else said, so why don't you just say it openly? I don't know why I got this. I mean, last time I spoke to him, he didn't tell me. But there are. There's Kava Homer, there's Hekesh, there's Shabbat. You ever hear all this? These are all things that we learned to Rosh Hashem But this is one of the most famous ones, so I thought you might want to know. So this was Pasha. Okay. The next page, I don't know if I'll have enough time. This is, I've done this a lot, I have some new things. I, I think with all due respect, there is no more important. Four psukim in a row, I'll try. That is the guidebook for us to be successful in interpersonal relationships. And I have to tell you, judging just from history that I've lived through, most of the destructions that we had, was it in Mitzrayim? Or was it Churban Beit Hamidash? Or was it the 24,000 students of Ari Akiva dying, right? You don't hear because they didn't order blood kosher. You don't hear that it's because their Shabbat was weak. You don't hear it's because that siyut was not, you know, good enough. What do you hear? They didn't respect each other. See, not that's what you hear. So what scares me is, that not that I, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Dorma Bull, Dorma Bull, Sodom Vamora. One destruction after the other is usually connected to unsuccessful interpersonal relationships. So it's serious. I think this is the guidebook. And here we go. Okay, some is easy. I'm going to go very fast, but I have two beautiful stories that are new. Okay? Torah says, this week's partial. I would sit and learn this with my children for sure this week, but anytime. Ready? It's this week, 19, I have an English, right? 
Yeah. Anyway, in French, you should read it in French. Oh, okay. I read it in English. Okay, here we go. Hashem is speaking to judges in the beginning. Right? Don't do unrighteousness and judgments. Right? You're a judge. Loti Sapanidal, don't give more respect to the poor person. That's not your place, by the way. You should know that. By the way, it's a good lesson to teachers, parents. Fair is fair. Fair is fair. Right? 65 is passing. That's what it is. The kid can't make it. Go to another school. You can't say, this guy, you know, he's poor. It doesn't work that way. I'm really sorry. You want to help the person out? Pay for the tutor afterwards. That's, you got to be fair. And, of course, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't be nicer to the guy who basically pays your salary. Okay, so that's the beginning. And then you have three words, which is not talking to a judge. That tzedek tishpot amitecha. If it's not talking to a judge, why is it in the judge pasuk? And the answer, God knows us better than we. We Jews judge all the time. That's what we do. That's what we do. Your first interaction with another individual is based on judgment. Who they are, what they look like, what's their background. Or you judge their action. Or you judge their action. That's interaction. You got to be positive. Okay, I have a lot to say, but I have two new things. Brand new. Ready? Let me show you what it means to have a positive outlook. Fresh off the presses. Last week's Mishpah. Uh -huh. Look how nice I tore it out. Really well. Okay, here we go. The scenes of Motze'e Pesach at pizza shops and bakery counters might make some people roll their eyes in disgust. But others, blessed with good eyes, might have a different picture. This is this year. Rav Mordechai Eliyahu Zatzal, Israeli Sephardic Beach Rabbi, the chief rabbi, I mean, it didn't happen this year, but our article was this year, was returning home on Motzei Pesach and saw the hordes descending on the nearby Angel's Bakery. Does that do anything for anybody? Yes. Oh, Angel, no. Yes. Oh, we're going to go back to Israel. It's in Kiryat Moshe. You smell it. It's a beautiful bakery. Hordes descending on the nearby Angel's Bakery in Jerusalem. Kiryat Moshe. Yeah. Look at the gluttony, said the rabbi's companion. It's been a week without bread. And these people look like ravenous vultures, like they can't bear to wait another moment. People diss a people here also. Who gets the first pizza? You got to go run, there's a bagel. No, said the rabbi. You have it all wrong. Look what a Jew is. They so love bread and baked goods that they wait in line impatiently as soon as they can, desperate to get a loaf out of their own. And yet, for a full week, not one of them would have considered touching a crumb of bread. Wow. Because Hashem wants to, what a nation. Same scene. Hate it, love it. That's amazing. That's cool. But it's amazing. There are so many stories. There's a famous story about one of the very famous Hasidic rabbis. He's walking in the street. He sees one of his congregants smoking a cigarette on Shabbat. You know, it's very famous. He looks at the guy and he says, Oh, I know. oh you probably forgot him Shabbat. He goes, No, I know Shabbat. I don't care. You probably forgot you know, I want to smoke. No, I know. That, that's how this conversation went. After wait, three, four times, he says to the rabbi says to him, Whoa, you're such a tzaddik. He goes, I'm a tzaddik. He says, Yeah, you can't tell a lie. You're amazing. <laughs> but he meant it. It's such a gift. It's such a gift. I gotta tell you something powerful that I just got. Oh, this is this is from Dasi. Yeah. Quote of the week. This is called the Klosenberger Rebbe. Definitely Google it. Klosenberg Rebbe was a very... one of the local papers. Yes, yeah, beautiful. But you should know, the Klosenberg Rebbe lost his entire family in the Holocaust. He just was the man who took care emotionally, financially, physically of the survivors. In our program here, we had four survivors. One of them, the guy who broke down crying, said that... The Rebbe took care of him. This is a Klosenberg Rebbe. He's a very, very famous man. You ready? The Klosenberg Rebbe went through the camps and he once told someone, there's one thing I miss about the Holocaust. Klosenberg Rebbe says, there's one thing I miss about the Shoah. Ready? When we went on the death march, we were all clean shaven and our hair was shaved off. No pay up. We marched side by side and no one knew if the person next to them was a chassid, a Litvak, that's big in our community. Was he a rabbi? Was he not a rabbi? We all just held our arms around each other and tried to keep warm. Just tried to keep our fellow Jews warm. That's what I miss. 
That's great. That's great. But we do. Listen, I do also. I do also. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I feel like such a hypocrite right now. I'm not going to tell you. I Something bothered me about somebody in, before, and so I didn't give them the benefit of the doubt, and I shared it with somebody. So here I am. I'm a hypocrite. Okay. So I just judged somebody. Something just happened, and I just judged them because I was upset about it. So, of course, call your wife. You tell them the story. I mean, what else do you do? Okay. okay. But that's not the way to go. The way to go is give the person that. All right, so you got to do that. Now, how do you do that? Oh, so, again, so very quickly, so the, the Mishnah says, number four, you can't not say it. Mishnah says, I've done the call Adam the Kapschut, judge everybody for the good. I happen to use this a lot. I love this image. Love this image. Look at it. You guys remember this? No? Yes. Is he looking at you or is he looking at somebody else? Is he looking at you? Why did I pick this guy who looks like uh, he's going to stab you in the street? I don't know, but that's the way it was on the internet. <laughs> Um, is he looking at you or is he looking at somebody else? What's the answer? Both. Right, you look at both, you get it? So you never know, right? And why do I like this? Because remember that old movie? The movie said, you talking to me? You talking to me? Remember that movie? You talking to me? So, you know what? You guys never talk. Like, you're getting all upset because somebody did something. He doesn't even know you did it. You know, like, who cares? It's not you. It's not about you. That's why I like this. Okay, got it. Good. Okay, everybody remembers it says ha Adam. Why does it say ha Adam? Because you have to take the whole person into the. It's a big deal, girls. I, 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 I I'm, I'm telling you now. I'm, I'm openly this. I feel like a confession at father's house. I, I, I really, I, I don't do this well. I don't, I don't. I do jump to conclusions, and I have to stop. But it's not, it's not good. It's not, it's not successful. And I will tell you, as a parent, I won't have enough time today. But as a parent, and definitely as a teacher, and even more definitely as a rabbi, we have to train ourselves. We have to. We have to take the personal out of it. You know, judge, why is this person doing what they do? Why is this person? There's got to be a reason. And it's not here just at this thing. Okay, we got it. The main Mishnah you have to remember is Al Tadin. You guys see it below the four? Al Tadin et Chavercha at Shetagia Lim Komo. Can you put that in your brain and in your refrigerator? Don't judge a person till you're in their shoes. Got it? And therefore, finish the Mishnah, which is not there. So what do you think the Mishnah is saying? You're never going to be in their shoes. Therefore, you can never judge somebody. There you go. Let's think for a second. I don't want to be like Mr. Psychology. Where is the judgment coming from? It's coming from the way I see the world, correct? So I see something, and I'm assuming that that person sees what I see. And therefore, I am assuming that person feels what I feel. And therefore, I can't understand why that person did what they did. So number one. Maybe the person didn't see it the way you saw it. Number two, maybe their emotional level is different than the example I always give is anybody who has younger children not. You give one kid the yellow lollipop and the other kid the red lollipop, the red lollipop is going to be happy and the yellow lollipop is melting down in front of you in the department store. What do you think? You're an idiot. It's just a lollipop. Yes, but not to them. Not to them. But it's not only for it's it's not to them. There, there are certain things that are important in the eyes. I mean, I have so many examples. I'm never going to do. No, you guys remember the example of no, I did some with the guy with the soldier. The guy. Okay, so during the Gulf War, during the Gaza War, we did this. Uh, Susan Franco did this emergency trip to Israel. Very nice. So we went down south, and down south, you guys remember, they all it was the place where these terrorists were building the tunnels. Right? To go, okay. So what do these guys do? What's this unit do? This unit gets dressed with a lot of gear on them and they have to lower themselves down into the tunnel with a light, right? And they have to see if as they go down, are they gonna get killed by the terrorist standing there like that? As a matter of fact. Do I have time? You need a time Why, I look that bad? No. Because you're okay. You're okay? Not when I teach. I'm never in pain when I teach. The Simcha Torah. sorry, I'm No, 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 no. Do you know that a novel is not a lot of, what I do now? You know that Navel is not allowed to learn Torah? A mourner is not allowed to learn Torah. It says, today Hashem is shalim is something Teaching Torah makes you happy. So I'm very happy right now. I, I can do this all day. Okay, I don't know, you guys can do this all day. So, yes? It's uh, similar to a Kohen whose Avel is not allowed to bless because his heart, his heart is full of sadness. 
and he cannot bless right. his people beautiful. beautiful because the, the, the bracha very good the bracha actually ends the you know that beautiful excellent excellent okay we got that so here's the story very very quick so this guy goes down there actually met people some of them who lost limbs because they wanted it's a serious thing it's crazy so we're having lunch and very nice and i see this young man he's schwitzing like a pig okay he's like perspiring I, I, he's nervous i said my yes he says any ask funny i'm nervous okay so i said i do that's funny why you're nervous he truly made me like he'd come up and they asked me to make a speech <laughs> yeah so i'm thinking to myself okay ask Tully Besson to go speak to 100 kids okay no problem <laughs> Tully, go downstairs and see if the terrorists are there Never! <laughs> I'm not doing that. I can't do that. For him, that's easy. For me, this is easy. And that's where life is. By the way, I learned a long time ago that stage fright, people do have stage fright. That's a very serious thing. I like people to speak. I push people to speak. And sometimes they don't. And, and I, at a certain point, I stop because, you know, they just can't do it. And, okay. and I think to myself, why can't you just get up there and say how you feel? Why is that so difficult? And, but then I realized that I shouldn't judge people in certain ways. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so Altadin Chabrecha. No, there are so many examples. Guys, there are so many examples. Okay, I don't, I don't do this perfectly, but I tell you this as a teacher. Uh, this phone thing has ruined life. It's just ruined life. Okay, so, but I try to understand. The kid comes to the class, I say, please put the phone away. Please put that away. Be nice, be nice. Please put the phone away. I turn around three seconds, the phone's in her hand. Okay, so I, I don't always do this well, but. I sometimes say to myself, she obviously, or he, got a notification the second before they walked into class, right? So right now, now this notification could be serious. It could be very serious, Grandpa's sick. I mean, it could be something very serious, or it could be, you know, the boy she's going out for a week, it's fairly big, she's marrying him, but now he's breaking up with her. I mean, that's possible. <laughs> but whatever it is, there's nothing else that's more important right now than that next, whatever you want to call it, notification. And I have to understand that. That doesn't mean that I won't take the phone away. It doesn't mean that I won't say it's inappropriate. But that concept of how can you do such a thing has to be out of my mind. Because I'm not in her mind. I'm not in his mind. There's a totally different mind. You guys hear a crazy story? And I didn't get upset. A junior boy, a junior? He's 17. You're driving already, 16. I'm teaching halacha in the class. Whatever. And of course, of course, they don't have their phones, right? I, I know how this is. It goes straight through. I, I don't know how this happens. Really, I'm serious. I'm looking at them. The phone is not there. How did he get this? All of a sudden, the guy jumps up and he goes, I got it. And he runs out of the class. I'm sad. And would you not think as a rabbi, I, I, I should be worried? And the kids are laughing. So obviously, nobody dies. The kids are laughing. They play fantasy football. You guys know what the fantasy yeah. football is? So one of his players was traded. <laughs> Girls, I, I just, I, I don't even know what to say. First of all, how did he know he was straight? It's obvious he had to see it somewhere. He noticed in the middle of my class while I'm teaching that his player was straight. And he had to leave. He ran out. He was crying. I'm like, whoa, whoa. And I have to live in this world, okay? I have to live in this world. But, and he was wrong. And I told him he was wrong. I told him he was disrespectful. But, can I just tell you that fantasy football to some of the boys is the end all and be all. And it's not only about the money. It's about, I win, yeah. yeah. You guys know what fantasy football is? Mm -hmm. They yeah. choose players and they bet on them. No, it's not, they're not bad kids. It's, it's just what they do. Like a thing. <laughs> a thing? <laughs> it's, honey, it's life, it's not a thing. I mean, I learned that already. What about, what about getting tickets for a concert? Middle of my class, not somebody we know. They're trying to get tickets to this concert, whatever. I don't want to say the name of the group, but it's disgusting. But here it goes. Middle of class, kid goes, yeah! And I'm thinking, like, I just said a beautiful perush. They just booked the tickets to the concert in front of my class, in my class. And that's what we And that's someone they respect. Yeah, no, but, but I don't take, I mean, I try not to think. Sometimes it's like beyond, sometimes it's all right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, honey, you're talking my life. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to bash phones all day. 
All right, let me get to the next one. I don't know how much I'm going to get to, but before, yes. So first of all, this is something I say every time at this time of the year. Just remember it. It won't uh, it'll take a minute. 24,000, the reason I don't shave, the reason no weddings now for 33 days, 24,000 Talmudim of Rabbi Akiva died because they didn't respect each other. And I say it every year, and it's not mine. A student taught me this. The word respect is a compound word. Re means again, spect is to see, spectacle. Lack of respect means that you don't give the person. The reason why they don't shave? Yes, 33 days. The men don't the shave. Men. Now. Yeah, my son, the women can shave. Oh, right. But there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> No, no, so it happens to be during the home. Yeah. No, it yeah. happens to be that in the 33 days that they died between Pesach and Shavuot, it's, we call it the Omer, but the Shiva's got nothing to do with the word Omer. Right. Okay, we got it. Good. Now, so just know that and respect. I want to show you something really beautiful, and please share this with your kids. Not that you need a motivation, because you're all good people, you don't need motivation, but the Baal Shento. Now, I'm throwing your name now. I'm dropping your name. We're not talking about Besser saying something. This is the Baal Shenta, when he started the Hasidic movement in the 1700s, one of the holiest people that ever lived, says the following. It's on the next page, on top of page three. We will do as much as we can. Whatever we want to do, we'll do next week. Two weeks is no class, guys. Next week, yes. Two weeks, no class. Okay? Okay, here we go. In addition, there's a practical advantage that a person accrues. You see it by chapter three? By judging his fellow man positively. Once I learned this from the Baal Shenta, it haunts me. So I'm hoping to haunt you, okay? Be ready to be haunted. The Mishnah in Avot, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mishnah in Perkei Avot says, Nifra'in min ha'adam midato, v'shalom midato. A person receives his punishment in ways that he knows, and ways that he doesn't know. What does that mean? How about if you look at me, and I'll tell you the rest of how I go back. The Baal Shanto says the following. Today, by the way, with security cameras and video, this is so believable. 40 years ago when I taught this, it wasn't that unbelievable. Yeah, sure, sure. I go up to whatever judgment I get, right? Mm -hmm. Hashem says to me, Besser, you, um, okay, let's say, you, um, oh, I got a good one. You lost your temper and you said something not nice to somebody, right? And I say, God, give me a break. Did you see how frustrated I was? And how difficult it was? You know, I'm only union, God. He goes, oh, let's just one second. Pull down the video screen, puts on the screen, puts on the video machine, and he shows me a day that I criticized a student who lost their temper, who was under a lot of pressure. And I didn't say, he's under a lot of pressure. So God judges me the way I judge others. That's what the Bible says. And therefore, a mission says, my judgment will come from things that I know. And then all of a sudden, that's not me. No, 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 you didn't do this. Somebody else did it. You judge that person. Now I'm going to judge you like you judge that person. That's the Baal Shepta. Are you haunted? Good. So this is a big thing. Big thing, says the Baal Shepta. Okay, let's get out of this. Uh, I like the saying, never jump to conclusions because you never know where you might land. To succeed, jump as quickly as opportunities do. Okay, that's Benjamin Franklin. He's too busy finding electricity. Okay, here we go. Now, go back to the Psukim, page two. It's a series of Sukim, and ladies, we're not going to get to the end, so maybe we'll do some next week. Hi, everybody. I, I see Peggy. Peggy's hanging out. Peggy's branching out outdoors. No, she's not. She's like, pick this one. Okay. I love this way God did this. So it says, what does it say? It says, judge people, right? Give them a break, right? Like we just said. Let's say you tried, you tried, and no, no, the person was a jerk. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, I didn't get the invitation. No, 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 they don't want you. Uh, my mother-in-law, no, maybe she didn't mean. No, she meant it. She hates you. No, and no, it's happening. It's happening. She never wanted you to marry her son. Oh, what do you do? What don't you do? The next person. It's crazy how God put this together because it's exactly what I would do. I just did it. I, by the way, I just did this an hour ago. I judged a person not a good way, and the first thing I did was call some friend and told her. So here, I'm a total hypocrite. So God says, Lo rachil ba'mecha. You know what you don't do? Don't pick up a phone and tell everybody else. That's so natural for me to do. God says, don't do it. Because if you do that, it's going like to get blood. Have a good day. Lot time all around. Now, what do you do? I'll get to the next pasuk in a minute. But again, God put the pasuk of Lashon Ara 
right after the pasuk that says, don't, you know, give a person a chance. I'm going to go backwards, watch, watch. I'm going to go like this, watch. No, don't look in, look at me. I'm going to tell you a beautiful pasuk in Pirkei Avot, and I'm going to tell you a new, uh, no, 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 no. In Tehillim, I'm going to tell you a new perush for You ready? Here's the pasuk, you know it. Miha ish hafez chayim. Right, you know that. That's why the book is called Chavaz Chayim. Miha ish hafez chayim. Who's a person who loves life? Right, Chavaz Chayim wants life. Oh, hev yamin. Who will have happy days. Li otov. So most people learn it. Li otov means, and we'll see good things. Who such a person is? Nitzor l'shomcha meira. You want to be happy? Don't say lashon hara. Now watch. I'm going to move the comma. Miha ish hafez chayim. Who wants good life? Right. Oh, hev yamin. You want to be happy days? Comma, lead ought go. Just see good. The first person. Just see the good. Once you'll see the good, then you won't do lashon hara. So maybe Hashem is giving us advice, right? Hashem didn't just throw out, right? He's giving us. You know, Gemara always says he always did the refuah before the makkah. God always gives us the remedy before the makkah. Look what he did. How am I going to lashon hara? It's so hard not to speak lashon hara. You know what? See good. If you only see the good, you have nothing to say Lashon Hara about. How beautiful is that? Now, now I want to tell you a really deep one. I say it every year. I, 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 I wish you would. This is probably one of the most difficult things for your children to do, and even you at this point in your life. Are you ready? I don't know for sure if this is 100%. This is my own thought. So you could always say, okay, I think that's a sesame. But look, at it. I think it's true. Ready? So once again, Hashem put two statements together, right? You see? Don't speak Lashon Har and don't step on your friend's blood. So you would say, yeah, because speaking Lashon Har is spilling his blood. That's true. But there's something else we learned from that Pasuk, turn page, to page three. Gemara Sanhedrin says, Ninayin liroe et chaveiro shehu tovea benar. How do I know that if I see someone drowning or being dragged by wild animal or being mugged, girls, or anything, right, that I must do something to save. It doesn't mean that I have to get in there and get beat up. Call the cops, right? Whatever. Or the guy's drowning, rent a boat. But you have to do something. If you don't, it's a low taseh right It's low ta'amod al dam reyach. Do not stand by as your friend or not friend, as your person's blood is being spilled. Got it? So now listen carefully. Nice, I got it. So there are two separate mitzvahs here, no? Don't speak Lush and Hara, correct? And help a friend in need, correct? So I have the same question. God, they deserve two different suitors, two different mitzvahs. One is a mitzvah lotase, and one is a mitzvah lotase. They're two separate lotases. Why, again, I ask, did Hashem put it in the same pasuk? Fair question. I'd like to offer the following. And here we go. Not only are we not supposed to degrade other people with our mouth or with our computer, that's lotse lechvatim amen. But if we see somebody else who's getting bashed by Lashon Hara, I need to act and do something. Which means the Lotam Allah Damreyecha, you understand, is an offshoot of Lotam Lechrachia. And that's tough. That's tough. So not only do we tell our kids not to say something, but they have to do the most impossible thing in the world. Not just don't listen. Get on that chat and say, you guys are going to hell. No, no, no. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, or say, you know, how would you feel? Or say, this is not nice. Or say something. Okay, this is very, very difficult. But in my humble opinion, important. it's important. I have to tell you, oh, Dennis Prager, does that do anything for anybody? Yeah. Okay, so he's very creative. This is years ago. Some of you were like, no, even more than you, Jose. Talking about some of the old people. <clears throat> so the uh, when you guys were like, nine, this is years ago. I have it. it it's still in a cassette recorder. You know, one of those uh, things. So he went to Hollywood and made very cute scenarios to teach us certain lessons. Like for example, uh, he had a scenario of a. It was a priest. He didn't want to make it a rabbi. Uh, speaking at a funeral, you know, and and these were all actors. And and the, and the and the priest is everybody's crying, you know. And he goes, hey, Johnny. He has the most beautiful hair you've ever seen. Everybody's crying. You didn't see the car that he drove. Of course, his point was that no one talks about things like that at funeral. So he had this scene of four women playing cards. And, you know, so one woman starts talking about a person, another person. And, you know, 
not nice things. And the other woman is, and the third woman is, and she's like sitting there like this, looking one to the other. She puts the cards down and goes, do you girls talk about me like that when I'm not here? <laughs> it was such a powerful, I used to use the seminar. It's such a powerful scene. See, that's a good thing. I, I, I think that's doable. No, you won't do it. Okay. Then you have no friends. Nobody can play cards with. Okay, I, I humbly, humbly think that's what God's intention was, to put those two together. Okay, so what should you do? Let's go back to you. You're, the person clearly did something to harm me. Now, I'm not talking about physical abuse. I'm not talking about verbal abuse. That's something else. That, by the way, nowadays, every rabbi, by the way, they asked for Chaim, of Chaim Kanevsky. Now all the questions came up, right? Should you worry about turning somebody in who's an abuser? He said, absolutely not. Go to the courts, go to the cops right away. It's Rav Chaim Kanevsky. Okay, just want to tell you, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, Let's go back to mother-in-law. I'm talking about something. That somebody did something. Your husband did something. Your, your sister did something. Your best friend. Fine. So don't sit that, right? Okay, so let's go back. But again, ladies, I didn't set up the schedule. Do you understand? This is Hashem, one after the other. How about if I hold it in? I'm going to be a tzaddik. They spit in my face. I'm going to be Mother Teresa. That's not what God wants. First of all, it's not healthy. It's really not healthy. Second of all, if it really lurches too much, it'll come out someday, and maybe in a way that's not so good. Okay, girls, I didn't write this. Lo tisna, it follows. Lo tisna et achicha bilvada. No, no good. Now, if it says lo tisna et achicha bilvada, why didn't it just say lo tisna et achicha, right? Avi, we're talking about a person you have a right to be upset with, which means we went through this process already. We went through the cleansing, right? We vetted this already, and they're still a jerk. If you're a jerk, and it bothers you a lot, don't hold it in. What should you do? This is the hardest thing I've taught you today. Hocheach, tochiach, et amita. Confrontation. Nice. I will talk about it in a minute. How? You need to tell me. You need to tell them. You need to say that this was a problem. You want to hear? Okay, well, let's, let's go. Below t- oh, but here's the key. Below tisa alav chet. But it should not, right, carry with it a sin. So the three paper sheet. I think the first one is easy. Come on. Make sure you do it in, in a nice way. Not embarrassing. Not embarrassing. Right? How many times the teachers should be told, wait till the rest of the class leaves and then criticize the kid. You don't do it in front of other kids, right? You shouldn't criticize your kids in front of other kids, by the way. It's inappropriate, okay? Or whatever. You don't go to shul and make a clap on the table and go, jerk. Okay, that's not how to work, okay? So don't do it in a sinful way. That makes it. You're getting a phone call. It's okay, it's okay. I wish I was as popular as you. You got it? The Lotzi Salafa. I'm so happy you have a flip phone, by the way. You just made me feel very good. Um, I'm happy you have a flip phone. Why? Because I hate <laughs> iPhones. <laughs> oh, there you go. A woman after my own heart. Okay, everybody got that? Loti Salabchet number two. Loti Salabchet number two. Maybe, maybe you tried everything. Maybe the person has no concept of how much they hurt. You gotta give them a chance. I said this story. This is really years ago, girls. I don't know if I remember this story when you were in ninth grade. Do you remember Turo? Yeah, I mean, do you see Turo across the street? Okay, so that wasn't Turo. First, it was a Holocaust Center, if anybody remembers that. Yafael Yaf used to work there. Yeah. And then they took that down. Then it was a parking lot. And that was great. And then they built it. So they built Turo for years. It was like three, four years. A huge construction. I'm teaching at that end of the school, uh, that end of the school, right, facing that way. And I'm giving this heated talk about something, you know, 42 minutes, if you go over there. I don't know, you know, sometimes you say something, when you see something, you know, you don't think always. I mean, I'm sure you do, I don't. And I, I was trying to make it this tomorrow. It was so easy, it was so simple. I go, guys, this is so simple that even a construction worker can get this. Whoa. Three seconds of a 42 minute class. You think I remember that I said it? The next day. My box was a searing letter from a girl who 
his father. <laughs> I appreciate that you did that. Would I ever have thought in my life that I, I I'm more excited? And that is good. So she did the right thing. I was wrong. Right? There's no way to judge that. That was wrong. And she said to me, okay, I said, tell me that. How good was that? No, but it is. Because I had no idea that I did something wrong. I don't know, girls, think about it. Would you not want to know if you stepped on somebody? Yeah. I said that. That was the first nice way. That's Rashi. No, but doing it is important. It's a chesed to me. It's a chesed to the person who they might not know. What's that? I, can I tell you something? At the end of my life, I'd rather know and not know. Do I want this at the end of my life that four people are crying because of me and I didn't even know that? Besides all the girls that I broke up with? Well, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> The last one is a hard one. And that shows you what God wants. No, the last perush, it's not there, I'm telling you it's my heart. The last perush again, we started with a Ramban and we're gonna, not end yet, we're gonna sort of end with a Ramban. You know what the Ramban says? And it's there later, but I just, just, just oh. Ramban says that maybe you, you, you are the person that can change that person. How do you know? How do you know? The person who said something about you is a liar. It's a liar. It's a chronic lie. It's a better word than chronic. What do you call that? There's a lot of something wrong. Pathological, pathological, pathological lie. It's a pathological, a pathological, I can say, pathological liar will not be successful in life. So maybe you, you can make a difference in that person. And you didn't. And who knows? Don't be the one that has him do a fit. Doesn't that feel that the world is like standing? So it's like if you change one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Ramba. But it's the same. They have the first three letters. It's good about it. Yeah. But it, no, but you're right. No, 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 but the beautiful. I remember, I remember a what you call a uh, girl from what's it safe? It wasn't safe. What they used to call the other one? Jax, Jax. J A C S. Okay, it was those who, you know, um, uh, um, 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 got better, you know, uh, no more alcoholic, no more. Uh, we have what? We have People who were successful. There's a name for it. I forgot right. Okay. And they came to talk to the kids. I was a girl, a girl from this society, from this community. And there, there, she started drinking and had a little bit. So the kids said to her, at what point in your life did you stop? She was like 30, 32. And what made you stop, right? They were waiting for a big moment. And they go, well, one of my friends said that, you know, you're gonna kill yourself. So I raised my hand. Did anybody else say that to you till you were 32? She goes, yeah, but some reason I listened to her. You, you never know, how do you know? So that God is saying, God is saying, the person really did something? You should feel bad for that. I know it's hard to do this very hard. You should feel bad for that person. And you should want to help that person. And if you don't tell them, as painful as it is, Adele, they might never know. So it's a big deal. No good? Everybody needs time to think? How many stories are you thinking about right now? <laughs> Everybody's running out right now and making phone calls, right? Right now. Okay, I'm ready. You have to know the people in your life. And there are people who chronically bad mouth people. That's their way of relating. Um, um, they always see the glass as half empty. I have a great and, life for you for that. And you could uh, tell them a hundred times, and it won't matter. Look, look at page four for a second, just to back myself up a little bit. Just for a second, and then we'll, 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 bottom of page four. This is, uh, of course, what do you call that? You know, uh, no, no. yeah, Wikipedia. It's called Mitzvah, Mitzvah Kiyopedia or something. Okay, it's very, look at number six. Just as one is commanded to speak when it will be heard, so too one is commanded not to speak. When will be heard. That is possible. Even the Gemara says that. Even the Gemara says that. It is possible. And it might cause worse, right? It might cause them to get more upset. So I agree with you. Okay, so you sort of have to wait. You have to know your people. You have to know your people. Yeah, but what should I say? I mean, the, the possibility of saving that person is Something tremendous. I don't even know where to do that. Let's go this fast. Okay, yeah. So these are one, you know, rules one, two, three that are very, very important. Let's just go for a second and either I'll we'll finish this next week or I'd love to do this in the nine days because this is it. This is it. This is the guide of us succeeding as a society. If we can follow this, there's one more little part, but I won't get to the other stuff. Ready? One more. So there's one more pasu, right? Four in a row. What's the next pasu? Loti kom, loti Don't take 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going back to the first question. Don't take revenge and don't be a grudge. Uh, Greg, quickly, because we're running out of time. The Gemara says, what does that mean? I have funny ways to do it, but I'll do it fast. The Gemara says that the person asked to borrow the broom, and I asked him for a broom or a sickle, and he said, no. Okay. The next day, he comes back to me, and he says, oh, I need the broom. So number one, I have to give it to him. Wow. wow. I took revenge. He didn't. Number two, I can't even say you're a jerk. You didn't give it to me, but I'm giving it to you. Rabbi Besser asked the following question. Thank you so much, Atel. That was my question. It's one after the other. Can you imagine what kind of tough student I was? They always threw me out because I didn't, I didn't let them get away with it. I really didn't let them get away with it. Anything I didn't like, I raised my hand. And then I said, you know, I'll become a teacher and I'll answer myself. I don't need you guys. Loti, come, Loti, talk. Right. Have a good day. Everybody feels, I saw him, by the way. I saw him in school. He's all right. He wasn't waving to me. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, he told me. He told me. I told him to, to, to go. Have a doctor's I told him to throw out the first pitch. Okay. That surgery. Room. Okay. This is so beautiful. You ready? You know why it's one after the other? Why am I saying something in the second case? No, I'm not. I'm so upset. I want to just get it off my chest. That's why you're saying it? No. You're only allowed to say it. How hard is this? You're only allowed to say it if there's not one hint of your personal part. You just, I, I see it, right? My mother-in-law just cursed me out. I see it. I feel bad for her. I can't even get it. By the way, my mother-in-law was the best. She really was. She really was. So that's why I'm allowed to do that, right? You're allowed to do that when you know it's not. No, I don't need mother-in-law, but which means really, 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 really care, really care. And I'll give you a hint, and this is the last thing we'll do now, and maybe we'll continue next week. If you want to succeed in your helping the other person, they have to feel that it's coming from the right place. Or else it's bad. Nobody expects, expects anything because they think the other person is just doing it to get, you know, to get their anger. So it's a more kind of... Right, which means I have to feel bad that this person does these things, and I feel bad for them, so I want to help them. Look, you know, okay, let's go. If somebody is an alcoholic and you want to talk to them, I, I, I don't think they will take it as you're angry at them because they're an alcoholic. I mean, maybe if it's a spouse, I can hear that. No, I'm serious. About it. If it's a spouse, I could see what the guy is thinking, oh, the, you know, you're bothered by it. But listen, I'm just a friend, right? Just a friend. And I'm saying, you know, I, I, I don't think this is good for you. I don't know if it's going to work, but definitely it's got a fighting chance, right? as compared to somebody who just embarrassed me in front of the whole class and I'm going, I feel bad for you that you, that you do these things. <laughs> you know what's once worked with me? Crazy, God put it in my head. I was very, whatever, this boy was very, very good stuff. It was seminar, can you imagine? Seminar. I was sitting there and I'm making a speech and in the middle of the speech, he screamed out something very, very disrespectful. But really disrespectful. Front of I don't God just put it in. You know what I said? I publicly want to say that I forgive you. Wow. Uh, That's such a good one. Yeah, I destroyed him. <laughs> I like it. Because basically, if I don't do that, you're done. That's what I said. Did I be honest with you? It wasn't pure. <laughs> it wasn't pure at all. He, you know, kids, people sometimes, I know people do things, you know, but um, it's very hard. It's so hard to do that because it's so hard to do that. But I tell you, but this is what, all right, girls, but this is the, this is what we strive for, something to strive for. We have to try to do that again. Okay. You know, nobody's coming in. Great. Maybe a school left. Um, <laughs> we've got to ooze out. I, I say this every time. You have to squeeze out the ego part. The moment you squeeze out the ego part, it becomes easy. Empty my head from me, because 99% of the time, it's not about me. That kid is not about me. He has his own issues. He's got his issues. I mean, they didn't mean to hurt me. Somebody has a tough life, they, 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 they act out. So again, I'm not saying let it go, but it's, it's, first of all, let it go is nice, but 
also see where it's coming from and uh, yada yada. Okay, you guys are great. Next week, Ken, Billy Nether, and two weeks now. Bye, guys. Yes. Next week, yes. Next week, yes.